Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. Uh, this Friday, I'm really excited to have uh, our guest on. We're going to be talking about the power of associations, the power of networking, the power of having global connections, specifically with the Asian Real Estate Association of, of America. Or uh, And so I have the president, the 2020 president on, James. Are you there? I am. I am, Michael. Thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, talk to you and share a little bit about Aria. Absolutely. Really a pleasure. You and I have talked in preparation for this. And uh, uh, we it's a small circle, right? It seems like we know a lot of similar folks. And I'm um, really excited to have you on today. Um, so talk to us a little bit about uh, uh, the Asian Real Estate Association of America and uh, give a little background because you know we're streaming this live to to multiple groups and of course we'll have the replay and there's maybe some agents that are in luxury currently that don't know about uh your group as well as uh those that are looking to break into luxury and and then how, how do you pronounce uh the abbreviation aria uh, that's uh, that's what i was going to say but uh, aria so talk to us a little bit about aria and um you know, where you're at today, and we can talk more about COVID-19 a little bit later. But Michael, thank you for this. Uh, so ARIA was founded in 2003 by John Wong and Alan Okamoto, you know, for the mission of sustainable home ownership and a powerful voice for the AAPI community. We're in 41 chapters and 17,000 members. We're the largest Asian trade organization in North America. So we have two international uh, chapters, one in Toronto and one in Vancouver. Uh, but one of the great things about ARIA is it's open to anyone and everyone that wants to learn and understand the Asian American or Asian community. So it's a great way to understand and get involved, the culture, the people, and many things that we talk about, and I'll put up the State of Asia America report, is doing business and understanding our demographics and our migration, immigration, where we're going. And many times we always say we're not a monolith where everyone says we're Asian. Yes, we are, but we're broken up to many different parts of 26 countries, 51 different languages. <laughs> so, you know, with that broad base, you, you really need to understand the, 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 the differences, the nuances. And one of the biggest things is the AAPI community. We actually have borrow at the highest levels, you know? So if you look at the census and everything else, you're going to see, we do borrow at, I think the average is 400, four, uh, 440,000 is our average loan amount. So if you're talking about luxury, many AAPIs, even though we're broad, they do uh, loan and buy high-end real estate. Okay, that's, that's, that's great to know. So, you know, a, a very diverse. So, you know, as you know, I've had folks on from NAREB before, National Association of Real Estate Brokers. So ARIA is open to all, newer agents, experienced agents, those that are looking to uh, find out more about, uh, you know, you know, working with global agents, talk to me a little bit about your position and some of the initiatives before COVID nineteen that you were going to be focusing on and how you've adapted because uh, sometimes you, you know you got like Mike Tyson once says everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face and and so you know how have you adapted and and when was your official um, when, when, when did you officially start as the 2020 president? And, and talk to us a little bit about uh, adapting during this time. Yes. So I, it was a great honor to be elected to be president for 2020. Uh, I was put in officially into office in October of 2019. So obviously COVID wasn't there then. You know, I was already, and usually during the first three months from uh, November, December, January, and February, we're installing all the other presidents. So I was fortunate still before COVID really hit that I got to go to every chapter around the country, the 41 different chapters to install their local presidents and see really the diversity and what each chapter or each region of the country in real estate, what they were doing. So it was very exciting. Then my last uh, trip to Jacksonville uh, for their installation, when I got back on March 13th, it was all over. And I was very excited to actually go to, as you say, the different diverse groups, uh, the NAREP convention after that. But then I'm like, oh my gosh, it, it got canceled in DC. But fortunately, you know, I went to the uh, NAREP uh, convention, their mid-year convention, was looking forward to their other one in Detroit. But for all of us, we, we really just 
got stopped in our tracks. The economy shut down, we all were shelter in place. And what we had to do from Aria's perspective is adapt, right? Because we wanted to serve our members, our sponsors, our community, keep the word out. So we literally just got in a group, discussed, and we started getting onto virtual platforms, you know, and, and just really adapting to it, getting better at it, looking around for what was the best medium to really communicate to everyone. And especially, like I said, the different languages that we have, especially with COVID and PPE and all these you know, things that are coming up so fast, right? I mean, you, you, every day for a while, we had news reports changing. This is what's going on. This is what's spiking. So we needed to be, uh, put a COVID report within ARIA so we could update our members so they can talk to their clients and really understand what was going on. What could they do with relief? What were some of the government uh, relief programs? How you could help with the home ownership or buying homes? You know, so we were there to really help our members and those that did not have a grasp of the age of the English language at a high proficiency. So we were there to kind of be that bridge and assist our clients during this time. Well, that's definitely commendable and being proactive versus reactive. That's one of the things we talk about all the time in real estate, right? You got to have your finger on the pulse, not just what's happening in your local market, but what trends are, right? Wayne Gretzky once said, don't go to where the puck is, go to where it's going. So knowing where the market's going, having a diverse market, having different languages, right? Uh, different currencies, understanding, you know, how COVID-19 is affecting various things. Now, one of the things that um, I want to share with everybody is a link that, that you had um, shared with us, the State of Asia America, and there's a free report. Uh, talk to me a little bit about this. We'll make this available on the various groups that were streaming this. Talk to us a little bit about this, this report. So this report is probably one of the best, and we keep on getting better every year and digging deeper so people really understand the AAPI community. So this year, what we did is kind of have a timeline from the, the, from the mid 1700s to show when the Asians started coming in with the Filipinos coming in Louisiana and how the Chinese came in, the Japanese came in, the Koreans and each other group. So much now that some of the larger groups in America are the Chinese, the Indian community, uh, Filipino and Vietnamese. So, and they are not only going into the gateway cities, right? Like the West Coast or the East Coast, but now they're filling in the Midwest and the South. So this is really important of how they're migrating, how they're moving around, how they're building communities in all parts of America. So with the State of Asia America report, it does show from the Asian continent to the Pacific Islanders, the diversity and, and disparity of it could be as high as the Taiwanese Americans at 69% home ownership down to 24 for micro Asians. So, so as you look at it, when you say it's all together, yes, you get an average, but when you break it down, you'll see that the community, some people need a lot of help and some does not need as much, but overall to lump it together, you, you don't really get the real story of what is going on and you let you know, groups fall through the crack. So if you get the state of Asia America, it teaches you and under, lets you understand how you can work with the Asian communities, how diverse it is, the language and joining ARIA does definitely help through a language barrier or just helping you connect and understand clients that may be coming to your area and uh, as all realtors and whether luxury, commercial or just, you know, serving your local real estate community, you need to understand who's coming in and by joining ARIA, you get a better idea of how to work with this community and just having the open mind of understanding it. They will do business with anyone and everyone that is a is a kind of a local expert or expert serving, you know, the community and just open minded. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. So obviously there's cultural differences, you know, Italian American, Irish American, various cultural differences. So understanding uh, some various nuances as well. Uh, is probably something that agents will learn by uh, by attending some of the free webinars or the, the networking events. Obviously, in-person events are mm -hmm. are on pause right now, but uh, understanding you know the culture a little bit more and not just the language uh, is something that uh, a member, if just like anything else, the resources are there, they can learn about it if they want to. Is that correct? That is correct. And and we always welcome everyone, especially since now. We always say we will probably have two webinars a day where around all our chapters, we always had one RE event a day, you know, 365 days. We had an RE event with our chapters, but now because it's virtual, anyone can attend. If you just look at ARIA, 
you know, www.aarea.org. You can take a look and we have all these different chapters that you can get involved in seeing exactly what events we have that are free. So you can kind of get a taste of what ARIA is, is doing. And I'm really proud that they are serving as a group. The first line responders are local businesses and communities. They're doing whatever they can to help out. And I think as all Americans, we all need to get together and help out to, so we can get through this. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point. You know, we, I was supposed to speak um, at, in April while the, yes. the, the big conference here in Chicago, and that was right about when everybody was pausing conferences, uh, being proactive, doing so, which looking back was very smart doing so. Um, talk to me a little bit about, does ARIA have just an annual conference? Do they have a, a, a mid-year and an annual conference? Again, I know we're probably talking 2021 now, but talk to me about you know, pre-COVID, what, uh, what a member would get um, besides networking and, and being around other like-minded uh, real estate agents that want to better themselves and serve multiple communities. Yes. So we have really four big events. One is our leadership that we were fortunate to have in January. So our national leadership training, open to anyone that gets involved in any ARIA chapters to upgrade your leadership skills. And then we have the Global Luxury, and thank you, Michael, we'll find time to get you back on our Global Luxury. Come on, we will get you back. And you. That, that is what we did virtually this time, and it was a great success. Granted, you know, we condensed four days down into two hours. So very, very tough, but very successful. Well, we had over a thousand people attending, watching the video, and maybe how many more watching through, uh, through Facebook Live and other medium streams of what's going on. So good taste. If you kind of take a look back at the records, you can see what goes on. Then every year we have our policy. We did our virtual policy day where we had 500 people watching with us uh, at the policy day that we usually do in May. This year we pushed it off a little more, uh, one more month. So we did our virtual policy to advocate for sustainable home ownership and the AAPI community when it comes to real estate and mortgage. Now we're going to do our virtual conference. So our virtual conference will be October 14th through the 16th. So this is a big one, a fun one, where we're putting the program together. Uh, we're working on a, a platform, Verbella, so everyone could kind of have avatars move around, mostly to support our, our sponsor. So there is a expo so they can all get on boards and walk around, meet clients, talk to each other. So this, you know, this is a, a platform that we're going to try out and use to see and get everyone connected, but also individually, instead of just watching the screen, I know everyone, as much as we love to connect and see each other, you know, we're kind of getting zoomed out. Yeah. It's yeah. a new way to kind of interact and talk, not in a, in a way that we're just watching a screen, but now we can walk around and interact with, with each other. So we're really excited to try this platform out. Oh, that's great. And and the, the dates again, October, what, 14th? October 14th through the 16th. Okay, very good. Uh, and if they go to aria.com, they can find out more information on those dates too? Yes, aria.org, yes. Oh, excuse me, aria.org, thank you. Uh, so again, just a reminder, if any anybody has a question for James, uh, I, I have this streaming live to various groups. We'll be checking. Uh, you can ask James a question. Uh, we have some people on the actual Zoom, Cedric and others. If you have questions, please type them in the chat feature. And don't, don't forget, to, if you guys get something from this, let others know. This is, I believe, our 36th or 7th Luxury Lunch and Learn. James, we launched this on April 10th due to COVID. We, we've had you know, experts and, and thought leadership and, and various people from our industry on. And the feedback's been great. So we're continuing this on. Uh, you know, even into the fall and, and hopefully as long as people still see value in it. So uh, if, you, if you are interested, anybody watching this live, maybe this is your first time hearing about this program, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, Marketing Luxury Group, our YouTube channel, and on the playlist, you'll see Luxury Lunch and Learn, and you can watch the previous episodes. There's some really powerful guests, great insight. I tell agents all the time, Grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow, James. And so if somebody's more knowledgeable, they're more confident. If they're more confident, they'll step out of their comfort zone and, and they'll, they'll attend more networking events. They might do some prospecting or some lead generation in a zip code where perhaps they, they wouldn't have before. So that's kind of our philosophy. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, uh, you mentioned there's, there's various groups, uh, various chapters, as, as you mentioned, 
Um, how, how many countries is ARIA in right now? Well, we're just uh, officially in Canada, but we have ARIA Global, which, you know, with one of our past uh, chairman, woman, Carmen Chong, is really getting the whole world kind of uh, combined. So if you're an ARIA member, you're automatically a part of ARIA Global, okay. where their initiative is to really bring the world closer to America. So we bring the world to you. Uh, now that we have to with COVID, but normally we got to travel through many different countries. We were trying to go, we were going to go to China. We were going to go to the Philippines. Uh, you know, they've gone to, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Hong Kong. Okay. They went to uh, Bali. They went to Greece. I mean, literally it's just okay. not Asia, but they will travel the world. They usually go to MIPAM. I know last year I went to Japan with them and China to prep for the, uh, the trip that we were going to go in China. So Mexico, Cuba, oh my goodness. You literally very open that they explore the world and they try to bring the relationships all to you also yeah. internally. And a lot of times, as you know, Michael, and I just have to give you a shout out, great course. I was very fortunate to be on one of your courses. I give it a thumbs up. It was a fantastic course. The people on it, the questions, the network, oh, the you. relationships, it, it was fabulous. So I encourage everyone to take the course. Oh, and, thank and, you, and, James. Really thank you. Yeah, so James is referring about three weeks ago, we did our virtual luxury designation course over to really three days. It was two days of content going over our designation, luxury listing specials. And then we had the Legends of Luxury bonus day where we had, it was kind of like speed dating. We had, you know, experts on talking about what they do for about 15 minutes. And, and that was really well received. So th thanks. Thanks, James. Well, that's why I always like to test it out and see for myself. And it's great. And I hope everyone is using this time to sharpen their skills and networking and, and collaborating, connect with people, listening, hearing what everyone else is up to and watching these webinars because you still can connect, Michael. And that's one of, the, one of the big things. You still can connect and you need to connect mm -hmm. instead of using this time as like a vacation, <laughs> but, right. but sharpening skills and making friends and relationships and getting out there because when things do get better and it will get better, you want to be prepared. You just want to get all your tools and your relationships set up. Yeah. You, you bring up a good point, you know, in our industry, I'm sure like a lot of industries, people are always looking for this easy button, James, but, but it isn't easy, right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. So, you know, as, as a top agent, as a top luxury agent, um, as a global agent, right? I mean, the world is getting smaller with the internet and, 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 and social media and, and you really need to be well connected, not just locally, but of course, globally. And so that's why, Aria, that's why NAREB, you know, that's why FIOPSI, you know, these types of organizations are, are really important if you really are committed to honing your craft, you know, raising the bar and, and sharpening your skills. Exactly what you're saying with the network and keeping consistent, right? We always say that, yes, you do it and you don't kind of do it here and kind of do it there. You need to stay consistent, especially if you're going to be in luxury. Because I always say that luxury commercial and international, all we deal with the same clients, high end, uh, high net worth individuals, family offices, larger groups, more sophisticated professional groups, your skill sets, your commitment, your seriousness needs to be at a high bar. And that's why Mike, I took your course too. I'm like, you know what? Yes, I'm commercial, but I'm always upgrading my skills because don't be in that silo. You need at least, even if you have a specialty and an expertise, Right. You need to be open-minded and, and study everyone's practice. Even if you have an expertise in what you do, by understanding everything else, it just makes you more knowledgeable and the reach of your uh, connections and relationships. Yeah, that, that's, a great, uh, that's a great point. And I commend you uh, by being a commercial guy. You didn't say, well, my business is different. You, you, you kept an open mind. You said, not only for your members, I know you took some of it to say, hey, what can I bring more value to our membership? But also you kept an open mind as a commercial guy. I can learn from this guy and I'm a residential guy. I can learn from you, of course, right? And so that's what leaders do. Leaders are open, they're not closed-minded and they wanna get better. And, and uh, you know, if you're a former athlete, you understand that, right? Success is a journey, not a destination. You're always trying to get better. You know, one of the things you brought up a point, I wanna bring this up. Uh, and by the way, we're sending you a package as well, James. And one of the things that we're going to be sending is our video brochure that's got a 10 inch monitor. And so if I'm going on an appointment, for example, I was just on a uh, 
$7 million listing appointment this week and, and they, they hired us. We're gonna be doing our lifestyle video next week. And, um, but we, we brought this. So when everybody else brings their iPad or their, their laptop, you know, we're showing up differently. We're differentiating ourselves. And I bring that up to you specifically because I went to a marketing conference probably four or five years ago where I saw a small version of this for, um, they, they did this marketing company, created one for like, I don't know, a Lamborghini dealership. And I took that concept and I said, hmm, how can I take that and apply it to real estate? And so some of our best ideas as a marketer come from not just within the industry, but maybe more importantly, outside of the industry. Because Einstein says doing the same thing over and over again will get you the same results. So why would I do the same things in many markets that upper one, two, five percent of home sales aren't moving quickly? So why would I follow everybody when you know we can lead? And, and to that point, always learning, always finding other ways. And it's okay to make a mistake or failure. It's okay. It's part of, of taking risks to, to be a trailblazer. And that's why when I'm always watching other thought leaders like yourself and people in, in commercial, international, other, you got to watch them, see what, hmm, what are they doing? Being open-minded to what everyone's doing and then seeing what works for you so you can better improve your business, right? Joining ARIA, joining NAREV, NAREV, FIOPSI, you know, NAGLREV, everyone else. You join all groups, you listen to people, you you expand your, your, your ideas and you take best practice like what you did, taking that idea and moving it because now you're different. Now I'm going to do that and think of that idea for commercial because it does apply. There are things that do apply in luxury to commercial and you want to be open to take it and try it out. Yeah, no, you're, 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 um, you're spot on. I tell, uh, I, I teach agents and brokers that most human beings are, are visual by nature. So we are basically, if you think about it, James, real luxury real estate, but all real estate, we're basically in almost like a dating app. People are going to swipe left or right if they don't like the, the look of the home. I mean, I could literally bring in the world's best copywriter, Dan Kennedy or someone like this to, to write the copy on, on, the, on a listing. People don't even read it if the photos are terrible, if the, the home is in position properly through, through photos and video or virtual tour what you highlight as an agent and maybe what you downplay. There's some agents that show way too much of things that they shouldn't. Again, you can't mislead or, 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 or digitally remove like with companies like Box Brownie, power lines and that kind of stuff. I'm not suggesting that, but if there's something that maybe the elephant in the room or Captain Obvious, like the hotels.com commercial, if there's something that you know that a large percent of buyers aren't gonna like or they'll be turned off by it, why are you showcasing it in photos? And I, I love using box brownie any way to, to make it a better photo. Like you said, you can't take out things that are materially there. Right. But if it's just making it look better or showing this is what it is, but this is what it could be, you know, and just showing the image and, and the potential, right? And I know we always do this in commercial, the potential, people will be very, more apt to say, hey, you know what? I like that. Yeah. I could probably raise rents. I could probably do other things to make it look better. So it's using all these tools. And that's why I love the last day that you had and all the different tools and suggestions and ideas, plus the discounts from all your different speakers. Sure. Those were great ideas. And yeah. you've got to be open to listen and, and spending time to understanding so you can see what's best, uh, best work for your business. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So let's get back to Aria here. So I'm an agent. I'm a broker owner. I want to find out more. Of course, you can go to aria.org. Um, and on, on that website, um, do they look for a local chapter or is there a chat feature or does it say find a local chapter? Talk to me a little bit about if I'm in Davenport, Iowa, or I'm in Chicago, or I'm in New York, fill in the blank, and I want to know if there's a chapter near me, what's the best way for somebody to do that, James? Yes, if you go to the uh, ARIA website, mm -hmm. you can look, find a chapter. But if there is no local chapter, then you can join universally. So then we will just uh, give you the information and like our large conventions or the nearest one, or if you travel, you can go and visit the chapter, right? So there's a universal, if there's no local chapter, but we're also encouraging as our expand is expanding. And, and I'll, I always say, you, you don't have to be Asian to start a chapter. You just have to have interest and you have to have leadership abilities to open and start and work together. Cause I know our Birmingham president, you know, uh, one of our Sperry uh, people, he mm -hmm. 
started the Alabama chapter. One of my great, great friends in New York, um, he, uh, what do you, he started, uh, Greg Christensen, he started and he's now, well, he's now president of the ARIA chapter in New York City. So if you look, anyone and everyone that wants to start a chapter, grow a chapter, use their leadership skills because they think ARIA can help their community start a chapter. So find a chapter, join universally, right, to be plugged in. And if you think there's a need, you could start anyone a chapter in any city. That's great to know. Great to know. Um, any any uh, words of advice, parting, parting words of advice for, for agents that um, maybe, what, what if, if somebody was an ARIA member and they came on financial times or they didn't see the value? Obviously, there's different leadership. So if somebody was a member, they could be a member again, correct? Absolutely. And we know during this COVID time, it's very tough, very difficult. Definitely pray for everyone. Uh, everyone is healthy and safe. And financially, you know, we, we all need to stick together and Aria is doing their part to still get everyone connected. You know, even though I know the membership, everything's tough, but, but we, we do offer a lot of free uh, training, orientations, just events so people can still stay connected. Mm -hmm. and, and I encourage that, really. It, it's so important that we help each other during this tough time. So for Aria, we are open with all these events, right? All these webinars, all these Zoom yeah. And, and, and affordability, right? So everyone can stay connected and hopefully create that one or two deal that can keep them going, right? To get through this, uh, this pandemic. And so that's what we encourage is everyone just get involved. You know, if not, call me, get a hold of me. I will help you. I will do what I can because this is the time that we all need to work together. But Aria, and I'm very happy that they always try to give back, help out, uh, encourage for all of us to, to work together. And if you come to our chapters, you will see that. And that was one of the best things that I got to see in Aria is the diversity, the diversity and the inclusion. Everywhere, all the chapters, it was awesome to see that. Yeah, that, that's what makes you know the world beautiful is diversification. I saw a post and I reposted it maybe two weeks ago, um, just talking about, and it was a picture of just you know, different ethics, different skin tones. It's beautiful. That's what makes America and makes the world so special. Um, great. So aria.org. Um, and, and again, I encourage everybody to check out Aria, to check out NAREB, check out FIOPSI, check out Nagel Rep, uh, check out Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate. There's some ama amazing organizations out there. And uh, that's really how you grow your network. When you grow your network, you know, incoming referrals, outgoing referrals. Now you can refer them to somebody that you like and you trust. They're going to treat your clients uh, with the respect they deserve. And more importantly, they're going to, you know, be an expert versus a generalist. Absolutely. Uh, be an expert, but open your mind to understand what everyone else is doing. That's my thing. It's always like you, you were teaching your courses, learning, being open, networking. And if you keep doing it consistently, Business do, does come, right? Not, not as under your timelines, but if you keep doing these, it does happen. Yeah, no, it does. Well, I appreciate your times, James, um, today. It's very valuable. I know you're cold in multiple directions. Uh, so I do really appreciate, A, what you're doing for ARIA, but B, what you're doing for the industry. Thank you. Again, uh, replays of this will be on our YouTube channel, marketingluxurygroup.com, Michael Lafitte. You know, check out luxurylistingspecials.com for more information if you're really committed to increasing your average sale price and catering and more importantly, giving the service and the marketing to that high-end and luxury clientele. Check out Luxury Listing Specials. Make it a great Friday. Prove others wrong and keep raising the bar in real estate. Michael Lafito, have a great Friday. And James, thank you again.